Good evening, God's people. We pray that uh, everyone that is watching, that, that you're in good health and in good spirit and through trials and problems, but we can still serve God through things. Paul calls problems and things of lives that come upon us. <clears throat> They're only for a moment. Though they might seem like they last forever sometimes, but praise God that God is in control. I'd like to read a few scriptures uh, just to encourage our hearts. And uh, I'd like to read out of the book of the book of Acts, chapter 16, this, ev uh, this evening. And, uh, you know, Paul uh, was called by uh, to come to Macedonia. They pleaded with him to say, come over to Macedonia and help us. And then it says that Paul responded and says that now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. The gospel is good news. We need to pray, read the gospel. There's a lot of promises in the gospels. They, they must be close to our hearts, especially when we're going through hard times in life. And it says that uh, they, they went to, um, as they were going on to Macedonia, says that there was a certain uh, woman, Lydia. She was a seller of purple and uh, from the city of Ty Theodore, who, who worshiped God. The Lord spoke, uh, had spoke uh, things spoken to Paul. And then on the way, it says, it, uh, now it happened as we went to prayer, there was a, uh, a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of, of a, a bad uh, spirit, met us who uh, met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. <clears throat> and uh, this she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed by her, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when the masters of that slave girl saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, charged them into the market, uh, marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the manuscripts and said, This man bring Jews exceedingly troubled our city. So they brought a false ac accusations against Paul and Silas. And they were mad. They were not concerned about that the young girl or this lady was in her sound mind, perhaps saved, but they were more interested that there was no more revenue of money. They were not concerned about human being, but they were concerned of the profit that we're gonna lose. And that's the way the world is. There's no consideration. The only consideration is in the love of money, in love, the love of their heart desire. They use people, they don't care, but love, God is, the opposite, he cares for, for people, even those people that are misusing human beings. So Paul and Silas were, were thrown in jail for doing something good, they suffered. And that's, that, that's the way it is with Christians. We as Christians try to live a good life, try to do things right. By the book, we fail, we fall short. But a lot of times, People come against us, and we suffer quietly, and but we continue going forward. But a lot of times we suffer, and it, it we take it uh, personal, and we we get hurt. And a lot of times, instead of choosing the right thing, we choose the wrong thing. Sometimes anger comes in our lives. Sometimes thoughts, ah, it's not worth being a Christian. But you know, Paul and Silas. He says that they were, they were whipped. They weren't saying you're gonna be in jail and 
and you're gonna be in jail, they're gonna feed you, you're gonna watch opera and television while you're in jail, they're gonna feed you, and then you come out. No, back in those days, jails were very bad. You didn't wanna go there. But Paul and Silas went there, not because they had done anything bad, but because they had done something good. It says, and when, uh, in verse 22, it says, uh, Then the multitude rose up to gather against them, and the miscreants tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Wow, that's, 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 that's bad. And when they had many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them secure. Make sure these people don't get away because you, your, your life depends on it, they were telling him. And then in verse, 20, uh, verse 25, it says, verse 24, having received such a charge to put them into the inner prison and fasten their feet in, in their stocks. They put chains on their feet, chains on their arms. But look at what Paul and Silas chose to do. It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and, and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. At midnight, instead of Paul and Silas crying, blaming God, oh, woe is me, feeling sorry for themselves, taking this personally. No, Paul and Silas, they chose to worship God in the midst of that problem. They chose to sing songs to God. They chose to worship, to pray. They were thanking God for the problems. They were thanking God that they were alive. They were thanking God that they had an opportunity to save a young girl from the life she was being tormented by an evil spirit. They were, they were in their knees worshiping. They were not looking at the chains in their hands or their feet. They chose to worship God. And believers, I believe that's the key right there for all of us, especially when we're going through troubles, trials in our lives. We're full of many problems. We can go on and on and on. And you know what, at the end of the day, you can have all kinds of excuses, not going to church, not going to prayer, not going to getting down on your knees and thanking God. All these excuses hold no water. Because you know what? Paul and Silas could have done that. But Paul and Silas, they chose the right thing. So brethren, myself, let us choose the right thing. No matter what, it, what you're going through today, God is greater. God is in control. Sure, it hurts in the heart. Sometimes it's very deep hurt. But you know what? The key is to worship the Lord. Don't look at the circumstances. Paul and Silas weren't looking at the circumstances. They were looking at God. They were looking at Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. They started to worship the Lord. I believe when we start worshiping the Lord, the Lord comes into our lives and heals us and strengthens us. And I believe that's what we need today. So choose to worship the Lord. Find a time to get alone. Get down on your knees. We need to get down on our knees. We need to spend time with Christ. We need to read the Bible. We need to worship God in times of troubles. It is easy when we're going through mountaintop experiences, but down in the valley, that's where we meet Christ. That's when he means dearly to us. He's always there. So my brethren and sisters, I, I know a lot of us are going through hard things. I know some of us are going through very hard things. But you know what? I believe that Jesus can help you because he was the same yesterday. 
He helped Paul and Silas. Back then, he can help us today because Jesus is a present living God. And I just wanted to encourage you with that. I don't want to make you feel bad in any way. That's a thing in my mind. I love you too much to bring, to bring something that it would hurt you. But I want to lift you up. I love you. So brethren and sisters, let's get up and uh, let's move on. Christ will do the rest. We do the possible to move on. Tell those feet, move on feet. Let's go forward. And Christ will do the rest. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord provide for you today. Because he's Jehovah Jireh, the provider to those that seek him. He says, blessed is a man who seeks my face. You are blessed today. May God bless you. May you have a, a good evening. Until we meet again, Jesus Christ is Lord and he's still on the throne. Amen.